Hi, I'm Bing Yang Sang. I'm a fifth year PhD student in CPAS. Today, I'm going to show my work on paralleling GAN device. To parallel GAN device, it is important to achieve symmetry in the power and the gate loops. To maintain a high switching speed, the power and the gate loop inductance should also be minimized. This is a power loop design for two parallel GAN devices using four layer PCB. To parallel four GAN devices, six layer PCB is used for power loop design. Here are two devices on the top layer and the other two parallel devices located at the bottom layer back to back of the device on the top layer. In this way, the footprint area of the four parallel GAN is the same as the area of two parallel GAN. The gate of four GAN devices gather within this area. This is the gate loop design for the switching cell with two or four parallel GAN. Here is one set of decoupling capacitor for each device in the turn on or turn off loop. For example, this is a turn on loop for Q1, and the Q2 has a symmetrical loop for turn on. In this way, the parallel GAN device have almost the same gate loop inductance. Based on Q3D simulation, the difference of the gate loop inductance among the device is less than 0.1 nanohenry. This enables to use small gate resistor to drive GAN. This is the switching cell with two parallel GAN devices. These are two high side GAN devices. These are two low side GAN devices. At the back side, these are decoupling capacitors, low side gate driver, high side gate driver, and the isolated gate driver power supply. The switching cell takes 63 mm by 33 mm. This is the customized heatsink design for the first version of switching cell. This is the standard heatsink design for the revised switching cell. This is the switching cell with four parallel GAN devices. These are two high side devices on the top layer. And the other two high side GAN devices located on the bottom layer. The switching cell takes 78 mm by 33 mm. These are the turn on transient waveforms of two parallel GAN devices with one ohm gate resistance at 400 volt bus and a 100 amp low current. The light blue waveforms is the drain source voltage. The green waveform is the total drain current of two GAN devices measured by one current shunt. The dark blue and pink waveforms are the gate voltage of two GAN devices. During the turn on, the DVDT observed can be as high as 35 volt per nanosecond. These are the turn off transient waveforms under the same test condition. The DVDT observed at turn off can be as high as 80 volt per nanosecond. The drain source voltage overshoot is related to the inductance from the current shunt. Without the current shunt, there is only 20 volt overshoot so that the switching cell can be used for 500 volt bus. That's all. Thank you for watching.